If you're falling from a great height without a parachute or due to a plane accident there almost isn't any chance of survival. But, there are those rare instances in which people survive. And here are 10 of the most extraordinary tales of survival during skydiving, adventures, plane crashes who survived high altitude falls some of them over 20,000 feet with minor injuries. Let us know their survival stories. Mohammed El Fata was a three years old boy who was a sole survivor of Sudanese Airways plane. The accident occurred minutes after takeoff, killing 105 passengers and 11 crew on board. It crashed into a hillside near the part of Sudan while trying to making the emergency landing. The boy was the only survivor. The boy fell into a tree and lost his right leg and suffers his burns and crash. He was seen by a person and was taken to the hospital for treating his injuries. Bahia Bakari was a French schoolgirl who along with her mother were traveling on Yemenia Flight 626 to the Comoros for a summer vacation. As the plane descended for its approach, minutes away from its final destination the jet plunged into the, the Indian Ocean near the north coast of Comoros on June 30, 2009, killing 152 on board. The plane broke apart as it hit the water she was ejected from the plane as it crashed, and found herself floating alone outside amid the debris. She could barely swim and had no life vest, clung to a piece of aircraft wreckage, floating in heavy seas for over nine hours, much of it in pitch darkness. She reported later that initially there must have been other survivors as she could hear them after the crash but later the voices became silent. In the next morning she came to realize that she was alone at sea having been drifting for hours without food and water. As soon as she was sighted, a member of the rescue team threw her a life preserver but the waters were too rough and she was exhausted to grab it. Suddenly, a large wave flipped her over and she disappeared from view, until she reappeared a few minutes later. It was at this exact moment that Maturafi, a rescue worker jumped into the water to save her. The next day. She was transported back to Paris. She recovered in three weeks. In 2010 she released a book, I'm Bahia, The Miracle Girl co-authored with a French journalist in which she explains the details about her survival and rescue. James Bull was a skydiver from Staffordshire. During his 12 years in the sport he had completed over 2,500 jumps. In December of 2009 he was working on a documentary filming an athlete skydiving over the Kamchatka in Russia. Known as the Land of Fire and Ice, it has 40 active volcanoes, and is covered in snow for 9 months a year. The idea was to get footage of the athlete flying in front of a column of steam hundreds of feet high in the side of a mountain. One day while filming his documentary he failed to open his parachute due to a communications error with a fellow skydiver. It launched only a few seconds from impact to the ground he plunged 6,000 feet without a parachute and hit the rocks at an estimated speed of 100 km per hour. He landed on snow-covered rocks and suffered a broken back and rib. He felt amazed that he had survived he was taken to a hospital in Moscow and then to Britain and was fitted with a back brace and started walking within a week he still continues the sport of skydiving to this day. Julianne Margaret Kopka is a German-Peruvian biologist, who was the only survivor of 92 passengers and crew in the crash of Lanza Flight 508 in the Peruvian rainforest. On Christmas Eve 17-year-old Julian Kopka along with her mother boarded Lanza Flight 508 in Lima, Peru to join her father for Christmas at his research station in the Amazon rainforest. The Lanza commercial airliner at 21,000 feet was enveloped in large dark thunder clouds and it encountered severe turbulence lightning was flashing everywhere and the plane was shaking violently which naturally terrified the passengers. Then a bolt of lightning struck the plane's engine and tore off the wing and the plane started to hurtle towards the ground the cabin came apart. The next thing she knew was she found herself strapped to a row of seat alone falling and spinning silently formed 10,000 feet above she plummeted through the forest canopy and slammed to the floor. When she woke up the next day she was amazed to have survived the two-mile fall. 
she survived the fall with only a broken collarbone, a gash to her right arm, and her right eye swollen shut. Kopka found some sweets which were her only food. After looking for other survivors unsuccessfully, she was able to locate a small stream. She relied on the survival principle her father had taught her, that tracking downstream should eventually lead to civilization. So with a bag of candy and one sandal she started walking for nine days, she hobbled swam afloat the downstream the wounds became infected because of insect bites. On her way she had to dodge crocodiles, piranhas and deadly insects. Eventually she came to a shack where she slept and was soon discovered by Peruvian loggers who used the shelter arrived and treated her injuries and bug infestations. With the help of a local pilot, she was airlifted to a hospital, and united with her father. It's hard to imagine a 17-year-old girl survive such a fall and hiking alone in the world's largest train forest. Kopk moved to Germany, where she fully recovered from her injuries. Like her parents. She studied biology at the University of Kiel, graduating in 1980. She received a doctorate and returned to Peru to conduct research in mammalogy. Christine McKenzie was a South African skydiver who survived an 11,000 feet fall with only minor injuries after both of her parachutes failed to open. She on her 112th jump had a parachute malfunction when she tried to launch and then she tried her reserve chute but it opened so forcefully that some of the lines snapped and became tangled. She tried to free the parachute but there was nothing much that could have been done. After a free fall of about 45 seconds, she crashed into power cables, which helped to slow her impact with the ground. When her co-skydivers arrived to the spot fearing the worst they were amazed to see her alive and she was even cracking jokes. She was taken to a hospital in Johannesburg where doctors found only a fractured pelvic bone and some bruises. She said that she would continue the sport. <music> Lieutenant Cliff Judkins was a marine pilot on a F-8 Crusader. In 1963 his plane was damaged and it was in flames. And so he tried to eject from the plane twice but both of his ejections failed. He tried to manually bail out of a crusader at 220 knots and not be killed instantly in the process. This was something that was never done before. The tail section of a crusader was 20 feet high he actually pulled this off by skidding the plane before he jumped. He bailed out when it was full of flame. His parachute was deployed but didn't open. He fell three miles without losing consciousness. His chute finally opened under the water but filling up with the ocean currents which were pulling him under. Because of his injuries he could not reach his leg knife, but he had a backup knife in his chest pocket which he used to cut free from his chute lines before they dragged him under. Despite his injuries he swam to a nearby life raft. After three hours he was picked up and treated for his broken bones, pelvis and injuries. His miraculous survival story was published in various newspapers. Nicholas Alkmaid was a gunner in Royal Air Force bombers during World War II. On the night of March 24, 1944, Alkmaid was one of seven crew members in Avro Lancaster of Squadron RAF. On returning from a bomber raid on Berlin his aircraft was attacked by a German night fighter and caught fire and it began to spiral out of control. The parachute was malfunctioning and so he was left with the only choice of jumping from the aircraft. He fell from 18,000 feet on pine trees and a soft snow cover on the ground. He was able to move his arms and legs and suffered only a sprained leg. His plane crashed in flames. He was taken as a prisoner of war and they too were surprised about his survival before being released in May 1945. <laughs> Ivan Chesov was a Soviet Air Force lieutenant who survived a fall of 22,000 feet. He was a navigator on a Soviet Air Force bomber. In January of 1942, German fighters attacked his bomber, which forced him to bail out. With the air battle still around him, he intentionally did not open his parachute, since he feared that he would be an easy target for an angry German pilot. He planned to drop below the level of the battle and opened his chute, when he was out of sight of the fighters. Due to the lack of air at that altitude he lost consciousness and was unable to pull the ripcord. 
he struck the edge of a snowy deep narrow gorge at an speed of between 120 and 150 miles per hour then sliding and rolling down to the bottom. When he was seen falling to the ground, cavalrymen rushed to the site, and were surprised to find him alive, still wearing his unopened parachute. He regained consciousness a short time later. He suffered severe injuries, including spinal injuries and a broken pelvis. For a month his condition remained critical. Despite his injuries, he was able to fly again three months later. He flew over 70 combat missions during the course of his career. Alan McGee was an Air Force member of the American Army during the World War II, who survived an amazing 22,000-foot fall from his damaged B-17 flying fortress. On January 3, 1943, on his seventh mission he was a part of a bombing squadron on a daylight bombing over France, when German fighters shot off a section of the right wing it caused the aircraft to enter a deadly spin. As his parachute was damaged he jumped from the plane rapidly losing consciousness due to the altitude. He fell over four miles before crashing through the glass roof of a railroad station. The glass roof shattered, decreasing his force of impact. Rescuers found him on the floor of the station. He had several broken bones, severe damage to his nose and eye, lung and kidney damage, and a badly damaged right arm and yet he survived. McGee was taken as a prisoner of war and given medical treatment by his captors. He was featured in Smithsonian Magazine as one of the ten most amazing survival stories of World War II. Vesna Vulovic was a 23-year-old Serbian flight attendant on Yugoslav Airlines, which was en route from Stockholm to Belgrade on January 26, 1972. When the aircraft was cruising at 33,000 feet a bomb exploded in the front cargo which broke the plane into two. The plane crashed into a snowed slope mountain in Czechoslovakia. She was on the rear part of the aeroplane when the explosion occurred and one of the catering trolleys pinned her to the wall preventing her from being sucked out during the fall. The tail section of the plane was intact and when the tail impacted the snow-sloped mountain it did so at such an angle that it made the debris slip on the snow slopes. She spent 27 days in coma and when she came out of coma she asked the doctor for a cigarette she had no memory of the crash. She continued working for Yugoslav Airlines for more than 20 years. She was awarded the Guinness Records by Paul McCartney at a ceremony in London in 1985 for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and do subscribe to our channel for more.